Today is all about backgrounds. Three tips to better backgrounds. As always, this video is brought to you by my amazing supporters on Patreon. Patreon is an excellent way for me to create and share content with all of you for as little as a dollar a month. Patreon.com. How's it going, everybody? Derek Stewart here. Hey, you know what? I'm fulfilling my duty as your art teacher guru to post a video once every couple of months. You know, it's the least I could do, right? Hey, well, you know what? I, I got to be honest with you. Um, life has found a way. Uh, I became a dad again for the second time. So I've been a little bit busy with diaper duty, man. Priorities. Priorities. But you guys are absolutely a priority of mine. So I hope you're posting more videos um, in the coming months. Um, but before I jump into that, I do want to give a special shout out to uh, Scott Lowry, my latest and greatest Patreon supporter. Thank you, Scott, for your wonderful support. You are amazing. Um, okay, guys. So... Today's video is all about three tips toward uh, drawing better backgrounds. Oh, but before we get to the tips, I want to kind of give you a little preamble, okay? Um, this is assuming, this video <laughs> is going to assume, meaning I'm going to assume, that you guys kind of un understand the basics of design. So you understand how color works, versus, you know, you understand how perspective works. and. Um, I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but you want to understand how things, you know, uh, kind of work cohesively, and you want to understand composition and lighting, and that kind of thing. This is going to be less about the, the the fundamentals of design, but more about the, you know, how do you get to the point where, yeah, this this lo this looks like a legit background. This looks like something that you would probably see, or you know, some sort of stylized representation of of that idea. Okay. So, fundamentals aside, let's talk about uh, my three tips for getting a better background. Okay, so uh, first of all, it pays to do your research. So don't, don't, if you don't have any perspective as far as, or you don't have any clear understanding of what uh, a Western type scene or what space scene or a shopping mall, if you've never been to a shopping mall or somebody's living room, if you, if you don't understand what it is that you are you are trying to draw? It may seem like common sense, but do some research, do some googling, or even better yet, go over to a friend's house. If you if you're gonna draw like somebody's living room and you say you're gonna draw a cartoon or an image of of someone who's uh, you know really into gaming, um, you probably want to understand what a, a gamer's living room might look like. There's probably gonna be controllers and you know uh, you know instruction manuals or something you know I'm a kid from the 80s so that's you know instruction manuals are all over the living room when I was a kid um, so do your research Google live you know it, it, it adds to the bucket of tools um, for this inst for this uh, pinup I actually did a lot of I, I you know I, I live in in the Northwest uh, so um, you know I'm not far from a lot of country you know you know fences and, and things like that we're not like we're not like you know, desert Arizona or anything like that but so I had to do um, I had to draw a little bit on my own experience and I also had to draw uh, on the powers of Google and Pinterest and and I, and I just did some research as far as like you know what what did the mountains look like in, in a setting like this and a lot of I noticed there's a lot of like purples and, and muddled greens and oranges and things like that. So I tried to reflect that into the, the far distance of, of the image. And, um, but then, uh, so once you've done the research, you kind of have an understanding of, of what looks familiar in that kind of a scene. My next tip is to talk yourself through it. And what I mean by that is sort of allow yourself to have a stream of consciousness as you are working yourself, working your way through the scene and you kind of you can you can do anything from just kind of taking out some scratch paper and, and just jotting down some in word in words uh, ideas of what you might find. Like in this case, when I was doing the original image, I was like, well, I know I wanted to have a cowgirl. Um, what would she be doing? Well, in a western scene, for some reason, fences just just pop out as as a central idea to to, 
to that kind of image. So I wanted to have her kind of leaning, um, leaning up on the fence and uh, just kind of relaxing there and enjoying the, the scenery. Okay. Um, so I, I knew that I wanted to have a fence. Um, I knew that I wanted to have things like, you know, just pops of color in the background. So cactuses seemed like a, a, a no-brainer for me. Um, I wanted to have things like, uh, you know, I assume that somebody's probably going to be out ranching uh, in this in this area. Maybe they, I don't know. Maybe there's there's other horses or something, and they need to have rope that they can hang from uh, this this fence. Well, there's probably also somebody's thought, hey, maybe I'll nail a, a nail into the fence so I can hang my rope easier. Just things like that. Just just kind of have a stream of consciousness to come up with with ideas that make the world feel cohesive um, and, it, and it could be anything from as random as a nail to anything as large as you know uh, clouds and trees and stuff just don't be afraid to to let your mind wander and think about the things that would just kind of randomly show up and it's it's really just um, y you the only limit is your imagination and the, the amount of uh, research that you're willing to do and and what you're willing to draw so go get it with that um, the the last thing I was going to say is with with backgrounds make it feel tangible. With this instance, I, I did definitely want to have her leaning up on on the fence, and for me that that is something that just says, hey, you know, she's actually existing in this world. So if you can find a way to make your character interact with the world that she or he is is a part of, then it's just going to look that much better. So as you guys uh, probably remember, here's the original sketch. Um, and then here is the final image in all of its cowgirl glory. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. I apologize for it taking so long, but I will catch you in the next one. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.